I think it's really interesting to understand um, the success of economy based on these phallic structures rising from the ground as, as some kind of success. Surely we should be judging the success of the economy on how the poorest and most vulnerable in our society are being treated. Housing financialisation is a term that denotes the ways in which global financial markets have increasingly understood housing as a commodity. And by that I mean if we think about our everyday lives, the ways in which homes have been turned into assets for an international capital class. Currently there's over a trillion dollars of surplus capital being invested into housing and we can see how housing and land have become a really safe and secure way in which to invest your money and get a really high rate of return. In effect, what we see is a range of different actors that constitute the global financial markets from Australian pension funds to Swiss banks to Cayman Island registered murky companies to sovereign wealth funds to high wealth individuals trying to find ways to make a return on their capital. That is profit. And increasingly, housing has been seen as a way to make a return. If housing is treated like an asset, then we can understand this as a form of extraction. So rent is taken out of the city and is hoarded by these global financial actors. It's not being recirculated into the local economy. And that's a problem. So if we understand these global actors extracting rent from cities, then we understand that not only is the rent being taken out of the city rather than circulating in the local economy, but these actors are treating this housing as an asset, as a safety deposit box for their money. So they have no interest in, in the city beyond the rate of rent that they can return. They're not interested in social purposes, they're not interested in homeless problems, they're not interested in building sustainable communities or economies and that's a problem and it means that we have less and less control over the housing that's being built in our cities. However, the planning system does allow local authorities to demand up to 20% social or affordable housing, financial contributions through agreements such as the Section 106. So the local authorities do have some power and potential to capture some of this value that's been generated through international investment. What we see in Manchester is a complete failure to capture that investment. And that's really disappointing. If we think about the thousands and thousands of apartments being built in the city centre, then we would expect hundreds and hundreds of affordable housing units. It's only right to ask a developer who's going to profit out of the city to contribute something back to ensure that that profit, some of it at least, is shared with the community and with the city to enable the city to be a more just and equitable place. If you take a walk around the city and look at all of these hoardings with all these global international investments, look down at the homeless people on the streets, it can feel really disempowering. What can I do as a Mancunian to challenge this system? And I think there's a range of things that we can do. One of them is to support organisations such as Greater Manchester Housing Action, and to put pressure on the local authority to change the ways in which they treat this investment to ensure that it captures some of the value. Another way is to become involved in community groups, cooperatives, and those kinds of organisations that are trying to prefigure and build alternatives from the ground up a local economy for the people, not for global capital.